How's it going 3D printers? Andrew Sink here, and in today's video we're going to be doing something totally different. Instead of talking about 3D printing, we're going to talk about Pixelator. And Pixelator is a program that I wrote in P5.js that will take an image and turn it into a pixelated version of itself and gives you control over the pixel density. So you can see here, as I move my mouse from left to right, the image will become more and less pixelated depending on which direction my mouse is moving. Over the past couple months, I've been playing around with P5.js. Originally, this started because I wanted to write software uh, for the plotter I had just built. It's really fun using the plotter to print out images I find online, but I really wanted to make my own. So I got a little sidetracked. I was trying to write a program that would convert an image into grayscale crosshatches, and that kind of led to this. So this is still kind of fun, and I like playing with it. And the purpose of this video is if you have any interest in doing something like this yourself, this is a great jumping off point and you can take my program and modify it. And I've left a bunch of different uh, features sort of flagged and unflagged that you can turn on or turn off and play with this program and really make it your own. This isn't really a tutorial. I've only been using P5.js for about two months or so, so I'm not really qualified to tell anybody how to use it. But instead, I'm going to tell you about this program, how it works and how you can use it yourself. So at its core, what this program does is imports an image, turns that image into an array of pixels, gets the value from each pixel, and then assigns it to a sort of arbitrary size pixel, which is what you're looking at here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look through the code, and again, we're not gonna spend a lot of time talking about the setup or the draw functions. Um, we're really just gonna talk a little bit about how the program works and some of the key things you can change if you wanna play with it yourself. This is our size function, and what this is gonna do is take our uh, mouse X position and then map it on a scale of zero to image width to seven and 40. And that seven and 40 are pretty arbitrary. Uh, I just found that at seven pixels wide, the image looked pixelated, but still looked like itself. Uh, and once you started to get past 40 pixels wide, uh, it just didn't really look like anything. Um, but depending on your application, you might want it to look really blocky or really fine. So you can always uh, adjust those numbers. But that's just how I have it mapped. So this is our pixel index. What we're doing here is we're going through the, the image and we're just pulling the RGB value and we're taking that value and then filling that into our element. So this is our fill command. Right now I've got RGB, so it's actually filling uh, with the RGB values. You'll notice right under that is fill bright, which I currently have commented out. The way that fill bright works is it's going to take those RGB values, sum them up, and then create a single grayscale value using an adjusted grayscale formula. And so we can come in here and I'm gonna actually turn that on by uncommenting go. And here we can see now we have a grayscale image. So this is the same file and the same picture. This is a picture of my cat Virginia. And what we're doing is we're converting it into uh, pixels of varying size. So from here, there's a couple other things we can do as well. I've also got something here that will, it'll uh, interpret all of those values. So it's gonna take that bright value, which is the summed RGB values and break it into four separate categories. So I've got white, light gray, dark gray, and black. And so if I uncomment this and run the program, now we have a four bit image. So I can move my cursor around from left to right, and it's still gonna pixelate, it'll increase the size of those uh, pixels, but it's also gonna show the image just using uh, four individual colors. So you can change that to 16, 32, 64, you know, however many colors you wanna add in there. Um, but it, it's kind of a cool looking uh, effect. It, it reminds me a lot of like early DOS adventure games, and uh, I had a lot of fun playing with this one. But in general, I'm using the RGB values just because they're a little bit easier to visualize. There's also something up here called no stroke. Uh, this means when I have a pixel element, what we're doing is we're just showing the value of that pixel and that touches and it's sort of coincident with the next pixel array. So by turning no stroke off, what that's gonna do is add a little black border around each of these squares. So now you can see we've got almost more of a mosaic or sort of a tiled effect. It looks pretty cool and it's not really what I was going for in this particular instance, so I have it commented out. But again, if you're doing something like stained glass or you wanna try and convert an image into, you know, a series of colors and then add that tile around them, this would be a quick way to do that. So we're talking about pixel elements. Right now, everything is a square. So the square sides are generated by the size value and that creates the size of the square. We can also try a couple different things here and you'll notice I've got two different types of triangles and at first, it still just looks like squares or rectangles, but if we start moving the cursor over, you'll see they increase in size. 
and it becomes really clear that these are triangles. So we can change that. We can also add different types of primitives. So if we want to have uh, you know, a circle or an ellipse, we can add that in pretty easily as well. So if you were making um, you know, something you wanted a circular representation of the, uh, the image, that would be a good way to do it. And then here at the bottom of the code, this is just part of our um, nested loop. We've got, we're just increasing the size of the, um, or increasing the start X position, uh, which is where it's sampling that initial color. And then each time it completes a row, it samples on the Y side. So we're gonna turn rectangle back on. And that's Pixelator. So it's a fun little program. I encourage you to try it out on your own. I've got the code up on open processing. So if you wanna play with it, it's free, it's easy to use. Um, it's a great introduction. If you're familiar with JavaScript, it should be pretty native. Um, I've used processing before in the past. This is my first attempt at really creating something fully in P5.js. And I had a lot of fun doing it and I'm probably gonna make more things like this. So uh, this is definitely something I think is really exciting and it really slides straight into, you know, using a plotter or a 3D printer, um, there's a lot of overlap there. So I'm excited to learn more about it. As always, thanks for watching and have fun coding.